I recently had a friend of mine give me a little present. He said he definitely couldn't use it, but he knows I'm pretty good at trying to make things work by getting creative. And Lord knows I gotta get creative with this. What we have here is a half inch drive impact driver, cordless, a NICAD battery pack. I got the tool, I got the battery pack, I didn't get the charger, and the battery pack is almost totally dead. Now before I proceed any further, I've already taken the tool apart, lubricated the head real good, checked all the electrical connections, and checked the motor, and everything appears to work in the tool, so it's back to the battery pack. Okay, so let's see just how bad this battery pack really is. First thing, of course, is go ahead and check the voltage. And 14 volts, not looking too good. Okay, next step is time to take the battery pack apart. Okay, after a little filling with a connector up top, I finally got the battery apart. And we've got, of course, the upper piece and the lower piece. There are 20 batteries under the cover. There are two in the upper housing and 18 in the lower housing. Well, at 14 volts, and it's supposed to be another 10 volts higher, it's a pretty safe bet that some of the batteries in this housing here are definitely either dead or almost completely dead. And it's also probably a pretty good bet that this thing is totally unsalvageable as far as the batteries go. So, time to start looking at some options. I decided just for grins and giggles, I'll go through and check a few of the batteries and just see what the voltage actually came back in regard to the individual cells. And as you can see here, things are not looking too good there. In most cases, it's below one volt. I went ahead and tore the battery pack completely apart, and obviously the stuff up top is just trash. Checked all the batteries, and then here's the voltages on the batteries. And as you can see, this is not going to go anywhere. This is a total waste of time. Well, acknowledging that my existing batteries are basically recycling, let's take a look at a couple options for maybe replacing the batteries in the battery pack. Number one, new NICADs. Need 20 of them. And as you can see here, they cost about $25 for the batteries, but just half the cost of a new battery that you would buy probably. But the tabs don't necessarily come out in the correct direction. Sometimes a tab needs to be at an angle for the other tab. So it's not exactly a straight soldering proposition. Acknowledging that fact, the existing battery pack was a 1500 milliamp hour battery pack. If I was to do this, I'd have a 2200 milliamp hour pack. That obviously needs a marginal increase in power to the tool. Okay, on to option two. Replace all the batteries in the battery pack with uh, nickel metal halide batteries. 2800 milliamp hour. So again, I picked up 600 milliamp hours on it. So it'll be a little more power to the tool again. At a marginal increase in cost. Going from about $25 to about $27. A little more attractive, but still, I'm going to look at some more things besides this. And acknowledging all the above, I still have the basic problem of I don't have a charger for the actual battery pack anyway. If I had a new battery pack or reconditioned battery pack, I still couldn't charge it. Okay, so on to option number three. Buy a new charger and maybe even a new battery pack. Well, check around. Summit Racing still sells the tool charger, and they'll be glad to sell it for you for around 50 bucks. Now, as far as the battery goes, they're a little bit harder to come by, but assuming you could find one, the pricing I managed to eke out was around $40 to a little over $50. Still, it doesn't make it very attractive to even look at fixing these tools at those prices. So, how much does a whole entire brand new tool cost? Well, Walmart will still be glad to sell you one, and they'll be glad to do it for around $124, plus probably shipping and tax. First acknowledging, of course, this one is basically a Chinese knockoff, and very inexpensive, so what would a top-of-the-line DeWalt cost me? General speaking, between the battery and the tool, you're going to knock down at least 320 bucks. Keeping that one in mind, of course, if you've got a Milwaukee or DeWalt or other well-known tool, a whole lot of them sell battery adapters to allow you to run your old NICAD or nickel metal highlight tool on a new lithium-ion battery. Now it's time for me to listen to myself talk. Okay, so what about converting this tool to lithium-ion power? 
Okay, so it's off to eBay, and that's where I found this little jewel. Ten rechargeable 18650 lithium-ion batteries, 3.7 volts, nominal. About $22.68. That's almost six times the power of the original battery pack. This is definitely worth exploring. Now, I know from past experience, you can charge these upwards about 4.3 volts, so 4 volts each battery is pretty nominal. It should not be any problem at all to operate a tool in that range or get it charged above that 4 volt range. That means I need 6 batteries from a tool and I'll have 4 spares. Now, I went back and did a little measuring and checking, and it turns out that, of course, 6 batteries and battery holders are no problem to get in the actual battery compartment here. I'll have those in there and plenty of room left over for wiring. Now let's take a look at the first part I need to modify. This is the top of the battery compartment and I've got to solder two wires on each of the power connections and of course these butt up on the top of the battery housing itself and then of course allow the actual tool to make contact on the sides. And I've also got to go ahead and find some way to fasten this back into the top of the housing. The next step is to go ahead and solder a couple wires on the contact post. I went ahead and used 18 gauge stranded for this. This metal solder is fairly easy. It's not a problem to go ahead and connect these wires up. Next is to go ahead and insert the contact post back in the little plastic holder for them. Since this is going to be jammed up against the top of the battery enclosure, it's not a problem as far as having them permanently affixed in place on the little internal holder assembly. I used a 440 tap and tapped the holder assembly and then a through hole in the top of the battery housing. One screw secures everything. It doesn't contact the, the actual tool itself because it's recessed in there in that spot. So with the exception of the little screw head sticking up, this thing looks exactly like stock. The next item on my list is a way to charge the battery. I went in and standardized all of my power connectors on a 5.5 by 2.1 little power jack and this port will be bi-directional. I can either use the battery as a 24 volt power supply or I can charge the battery using my 26 volt DC-DC converter. Now it's time to talk a little bit about a wiring diagram. This is the one that comes with the battery protect circuit. As you can see here you have six sense wires that are going to the battery cells themselves. The P plus and the P minus are the power input or power output ports. Both of them go respectively either to my power connector for charging the battery to the top of the battery itself to power the tool. Here's my chicken scratching diagram showing everything wired up as it would be in the case going into the battery itself. I'm planning on using wire nuts everywhere but the sense wires themselves so I could separate the two halves of the battery. Since I'm using replaceable cells instead of a fixed battery, if I just have one cell go bad, I just need to replace the one cell. And that way, it's minimal expense and don't have to replace the entire battery. Before I begin looking at all my hardware, let me just say that I put generic descriptions of everything I'm using here inside the description. Since eBay's auction are constantly evolving, there's no way to give you an exact link Okay, let's take a look at the actual wiring. In this case, I decided to use two 3-cell 18650 battery holders. The wiring on the left consists primarily of the positive wiring and the sense wiring for the battery protect circuit. The wiring on the right is the ground side. This particular unit is fastened to the lower battery compartment. As before, this is a three cell unit and it will be fastened to the upper battery compartment. And here's a shot of both battery compartments flipped right side up. Now onto the battery protection circuit. In this case, the P minus wiring is the one up at the top. The P plus wiring is the one at the bottom. These are the two that actually provide the power to either the plug at the top of the battery or to the incoming power from my power input jack. The connection on the left is where the sense wiring plugs in. The wire coming out more towards the middle of the board is a thermistor that gets wrapped around one of the batteries to sense battery temperature. This one is a shot of the sense wiring connector plugged into the battery protection board. 
Now it's time to take a look at the final installation. In this case, the hardware is held in place in the battery compartment by 440 volts. The wire nuts you see exposed here will tuck up nicely in the former battery space behind the battery holder. These next two shots are just of my charging connector. And remember this battery is bi-directional. I can use it as a 24 volt battery to power any 24 volt DC load or I can charge through this port. And here are a couple shots of the battery protection circuit in its new home. Connectors plugged in, the wires are run. The only thing that's not there is the batteries haven't been installed yet. It's sitting on top of the upper battery holder held in place by two-sided tape. These are just a couple more shots of the inside of the actual battery itself. The only thing again missing is the batteries themselves. I've got some 9.9 .9 milliamp hour batteries, which of course allow this thing to be a nearly 10 amp power supply or to power the tool with those nearly 10 amp batteries. I think it turned out pretty well. The only thing left of course is the actual power supply that I used to charge the tool and that's what we're going to get into right now. The particular case here is an old Roku that died on me. It's a little on the fragile side being plastic. I've already got a metal case I'm going to upgrade to. The upper power supply is a AC to DC switcher, 24 volts DC. The lower is the actual boost power supply, boosting from 24 volts to around 26, and it's continuously adjustable. Here's a shot of the front of my power supply. The connector on the right is for AC. Connector up top is to 26 volts to charge the actual tool. And the bottom is a 24 volt tap, just for 24 volt power. And now we come to the portion of the video where I answer the question about, well, did you really fix anything? Did you really get your impact driver to work? Was that free impact driver something you could fix, or is it just something you're going to be throwing in the back of your closet and forget about it? Well, let's take a look, see. I believe we can agree that this seems to work pretty well. As you can see, I'm basically just doing the same thing you would with any impact driver. Breaking the lug nuts loose, and now I'll go ahead and put them back on and tighten them back up. As you can see, this thing works pretty darn good. Maybe not as good as that $300 plus DeWalt, but I'll take it. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video both interesting and useful. If you did, please consider giving me a like and also consider subscribing. I've definitely got a few more videos coming along the line. I think you could definitely go and want to see. Till I pass cross again. Y'all take care now. You're here. This is the engineer on the side. We gone by.